Hey, it's Carrie here with DessertsOnADime.com and today I'm making one of our very popular recipes, puppy chow. Now, it's not for dogs, it's for us to eat and it's delicious. Some people call it Muddy Buddies, but we call it puppy chow and you're gonna learn how just six ingredients in a few minutes you'll have an amazing dessert. You can get the full recipe in the link in the description below. Okay, so today we're going to make our six ingredient puppy chow. I think it's six ingredients. One, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, six ingredients. It's super easy to make. Today I'm going to show you how to make it in the microwave. You can make it on the stovetop, just go to the full recipe at dessertsonadime.com where we'll teach you how to make it on the stovetop as well. I personally like using it in the microwave because the kids can actually help us um, in the kitchen. It's very easy and it's pretty much foolproof. Okay, so we're gonna start with, we have a cup of chocolate chips. Oops, I gotta run away. I should probably eat that one. Um, some butter. vanilla and peanut butter. We're going to combine all this into one microwave safe bowl. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to microwave this in 30 second intervals. Yes, my microwave is down here below. I know it's a weird spot. So we're gonna let that microwave for 30 seconds and then we're going to stir it. Now, it's really important that you don't just do two minutes. You want it to be the full 30 seconds, stir 30 seconds. Because when you're using a microwave, it heats the bowl first and all the chips on the outside will get burned. So the reason we're stirring them is because we're mixing them together. It will distribute the heat evenly and it will make sure that the sides aren't getting burned because we're pushing the sides in and the end out. Hopefully that makes sense. But back in the olden days, Carrie would just ignore recipes and not do the stir, and then she would have burnt, disgusting chocolate chips. Or some of my children, they've done that before when they thought I didn't know what I was talking about, and they burnt their chocolate chips. And once you burn your chocolate chips, you really just can't go back. They're done. Okay, another 30 seconds to see. Doesn't take long. Okay, so I want to show you what it looks like. If you look at it first glance, you're probably thinking it's not melted. But when we stir it, we're going to aggressively stir it to combine everything. And as the heat moves around, it will slowly melt the rest of those chocolate chips because you don't want to overcook it. So it's very important that you're actually stirring it well because let's already look at the difference. With just a few seconds, everything's combining and those chocolate chips that we were seeing are now melting. So that's the real trick. It's just make sure you don't over microwave your chocolate chips. And the great thing about it is my bowl isn't very hot. It's just warm. So this is why it's completely kid friendly. Okay, while I'm stirring that, let's talk about the peanut butter. If you have a peanut allergy, you can substitute this. Um, you can use, if you don't have an allergy to almonds, almond butter. There's also sunflower seed butter. Um, I've never tried it, but my sister and I talked about cookie butter. Or um, you could even just do more chocolate chips. It'll just be really, really rich. Or like a white chocolate chip. So you could do like a regular chocolate and a white chocolate chips just to make sure you get that moisture the extra coating in there okay so as we were talking as you can see look how beautifully incorporated it is okay now we're just going to pour this over our Chex Mix I am using a corn Chex Mix today mmm but any Chex Mix will work. We have nine cups of Chex cereal in the bowl. I'm going to pour the melted chocolate mixture right on top. You want to work quickly because that chocolate mixture will cool off and harden. Okay. 
Then we're gonna gently fold it in. I'm making a mess. I told my sister that, yeah, this bowl's big enough. That's okay. You're definitely gonna want a large bowl, but you're just wanting to get that chocolate mixture coated throughout. Okay, now it has taken a little bit. You want to keep gently stirring it. Don't rush the process because you're just wanting to get some chocolate on every piece of Chex Mix. Um, you just keep moving it around and look, it is perfectly coated all over everything. Now it's time for us to add the powdered sugar. There are multiple ways that you can do this. You can use a two gallon um, Ziploc bag or like a giant bag from the grocery store, like a paper bag, you can use that as well. I don't have either one of those today. So we're going to use two one gallon bags, which works just as well. So what I'm going to do today is I have a freezer bag holder. If you don't know what these are, I have a link in the description, but you can get them on Amazon. They're very inexpensive. But what they basically do is they just hold your bags open. You don't have to use it, but why not? Let's see how they're just gonna keep it open for me because I'm probably gonna make a giant mess with my Chex Mix, because anytime I'm on a video, I make a mess. Let's just, every time I'm in the kitchen, I make a mess. Let's just rephrase that. Okay, so I have two cups of powdered sugar. So what I'm gonna do is put one cup in each bag. I'm just gonna kind of divide this in half, in equal to each bag. I like to put the powdered sugar in first just so the chocolate mixture doesn't stick to everything. But you do you. You can do it afterwards too. It doesn't really matter, honestly. One last shake. So I feel like, did he get gypped a little? That's okay. Okay, so now we're going to put this in the bag. Yummy. We're gonna be here all day. Da -da 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 -da. I'm ready for some pumpkin. Oh, ooh, my voice cracked. So what happens when you have a sore throat? That's okay though. Much better. But see how the bags are staying open for me? They're not collapsing on me. It's making it a lot easier. I know I'm making it look like it's difficult, but it's not. Okay. So once they're done and in the bag, now, normally when you put food in a bag, your first idea, let's clean this up. Your first idea is to fold it in half and get as much air out. However, you don't want to do that in this instance. So we're going to zip it closed and keep as much air in there as we can. Okay, this gives you room to shake. I flip it over and just keep flipping it until every piece of Chex Mix is coated in that powdered sugar. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, one more over here. Again, we want as much air in the bag, flip it, and coat it. Now, I probably could have fit all this into one bag, but the reason I did two bags is I wanted lots of room to flip it. So now that they are completely coated, they're ready to eat. I like to put it in a different bag just so it looks prettier or put it in a pretty bowl. Mmm, but it's delicious. Okay, so I put my puppy chow in a really pretty bowl and now it's ready to serve. Now, here's the fun thing about puppy chow and you can find on our website, dessertsonadime.com, is that you can make puppy chow for any occasion. You can change up the chocolate to, with melting chocolates to make it super fun for every holiday. So like we have a Christmas one, a Valentine's Day one, and a St. Patrick's Day one. And you can get all those recipes on dessertsonadime.com, but you can also add in your favorite candy. M&Ms are delicious. 
in a puppy chow. So make sure you go to dessertsandadime.com for more information and to see all the different ways that we make our puppy chow amazing. But in the meantime, don't forget to get the link in the description for today's puppy chow recipe. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any more of our fun, family-friendly recipes. I'll see you next time in my kitchen. Bye, friends.